Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. Would you like to make a significant contribution on your job, to your church, your community, or any other area that you might desire? Regardless of where we are in life, the answer should be an unequivocal yes. See, God didn't create you and I in his image and after his likeness to have us muddle through life just going along to get along. Make no mistake about it. Our Heavenly Father wants us to make a significant difference in our world and sphere of influence, whatever and wherever that might be. James 4.10, James 4 verse 10 in the Classic Amplified Bible says, Humble yourselves, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will lift you up and make your lives significant. See, and this is important. It's not what you do that builds a life of significance. It's who you serve. What does it mean to live a life that is significant? According to dictionary.com, the word significant means important of consequence. In order to achieve significance in this life, we must first manifest humility in our everyday life. Now, I'm going to believe that your life is characterized by scriptural humility, thus releasing the seven keys of living a life of significance. Number one, remain the same or change. An unwillingness to change one opinion might also be known as rigor mortis of the mind. A hardening of the attitude is equally perilous to your health as is hardening of the arteries. With hardening of the arteries, your natural heart will not function properly, which might cause a heart attack or even death. A person with a hardening of the attitude ignores the thoughts and intents of our Lord and may find themselves lacking in compassion and motivation. A mind that's unwilling to change will never experience what could be. Acts 319, 319, the Living Bible. Now change your mind and attitude to God and turn to Him so He can cleanse away your sins and send you wonderful times of refreshment from the presence of the Lord. What does it take to change, well, to change a mind and an attitude? Turning to Jesus, so he will cleanse us of any and all unrighteousness. Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 in the Classic Amplified says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. A significant part of Romans 12 too says it like this in the New Living Translation. We quote this often. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. A person ignorant of the word will often possess an unwillingness to change their minds about anything, creating a hardening of the attitude. Whereas the person who has a willingness to change will lead a life of significance. Number two, maximize your creative energy first thing each day. Several of the secular life coaches, motivational speakers, Bible teachers are now teaching that time management is a waste of time. They're now encouraging people to be more concerned about energy management. No matter what you call it, when you put first things first, you're going to become energized New revelation causes excitement, and excitement is an energy source. You are the freshest in the morning, so it's always good to put first things first. 
Proverbs 8, 17, Proverbs 8, verse 17 teaches, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Hallelujah. When it comes to the workplace or the marketplace, you perform your most essential jobs or tasks first. If you wake up to 200 emails, as we often do, you don't necessarily need to answer them first. We need to answer and complete the most important tasks first, the ones with the highest priority. Then you can an- handle the other tasks later. You need to schedule your focus early on key projects when you're the freshest. Think about and visualize the things you want to accomplish. This will help sharpen your focus as you manage your energy toward greater success. Number three, get rewarded every time. Ephesians 6, 8, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. The Message Bible, well, it's, here's how it reads in Ephesians 6, 8. Good work will get you good pay for the master. Hmm. Over the years, I've had many people ask, I can always be so happy, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. It's because I sow happiness. If you want happiness in your life, then sow happiness into the lives of others. Sadly, there are people who want happiness, but have never sown the first seed of happiness. If you want your dreams to come true, ask God to use you to help others make their dreams come true. God will do for you what you've done for them. That's Ephesians 6, 8. The New International Version of Ephesians 6, 8 says it this way. The Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does. Personalize that verse. The Lord will reward your vet for whatever good she does. The Lord will reward, reward Ray for whatever good he does. If you want to be rewarded, paid, and blessed, then make it your business, your mission, your passion to help others achieve significance in their lives. Number four, you are an original. You're not a clone and you're not a robot. You're an original. God didn't create you or me or any of us to be clones or copies of somebody else. He created us to be an original, to be significant in his kingdom just as he created us to be. Over the years, I've heard, and Harold's heard, I know, people try to emulate their favorite secular or ministry idol. I mean, I understand that. You know, they just like that person so much that they want to walk like them, talk like them, use the same mannerisms. In fact, preach messages just like them, word for word. But God did not create you to be a clone. He created you to be an original. That means that you can be only the best you can be by being an original. We heard it said many, many years ago that if you want to be just like somebody else, then actually all you'll ever be is second best. So that's worth pondering because God made you Number one, you, your fingerprints, your voice prints. Hey, my voice print. And everything about you is totally unique. Herman Melville, who wrote the book Moby Dick, once said, it is better to fall, to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. And that is a good quote. Very good quote. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the word original means the source or cause from which something arises. What makes you an original is your source of origination. And in Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 1, verse 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So as an original, you are created in God's image after his likeness, and that, child of God, makes you incredibly significant. 
in his eyes and in everybody else's. Hallelujah. When you think about that. It, it is, honey, and the important thing is we, beneath, we need to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us. That's right. And, and he, when he looks at us, he when he sees. looks at us, he sees the potential that he placed in us to be who the Word of God says that we can be. Well, he sees an original. That's Somebody exactly right. unlike anybody who's ever lived on planet Earth. And really, every one of us counts. You might say, well, you know, I don't feel like I do. But everything that happens around the globe, I mean, you wouldn't have food if there weren't farmers. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to go in the grocery store unless somebody opened one. I'm serious when I say everybody is needed in the capacity in which they were designed and came about. I mean, God has it figured out in ways that we don't even know how how he even could imagine all of that. That's exactly right. It's amazing. You know, earlier in the call, there's a statement made. A mind that's unwilling to change will never experience what could be. Mm. Are you willing to change? Change some of the habits? To be able to find more time to spend in the presence of the Lord and in the Word? That's really the key to God's plan for our significance, to have more time in the Word, more time in His presence, and, and being ever ready. Uh, we're going to stop right here. We'll pick it up tomorrow. But I want to tell you, we were having a few days ago lunch in a restaurant with a couple, wonderful people. And our server was pregnant and was going to have the baby in December. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in December. She's I asked her, I said, would you mind if we prayed for you and for the baby? She said, no, that'd be wonderful. So she came over. I had Bev lay her hand on her stomach. I put mine on Bev's hand. And we held hands with the other couple. And we prayed for her to have a quick, easy delivery and some other things. And it blessed her, tear in her eyes. And um, she said, thank you, and we left. Our friends had to go back to the restaurant. And uh, when they went back to pick up something they'd left. By a divine appointment. By a divine appointment. This other server walked up to him and said, are y'all the ones that prayed for Chris? Well, Ms. the other girl. And they said, yes. She said, I need you to pray for me too. I'm now having to take care of my two-year-old grandson. And I really need the favor of God and wisdom. So they prayed for her right there. See, God's plan for significance is be ready to be used by Him. That's right. When situations arrive. In season and out of season. Don't wait for somebody to ask you. You ask them. Amen. In season and out of season, like you said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to HaroldHerring.com. Check out this week's two-minute video. Be blessed by it. Speaking of blessed, if you're blessed by the teaching up at the top where it says soul seed, just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.